Welcome to this liberal presentation. So and he's okay. Gio. Uh, I'm Santiago from We Are From Aldemundi. I'm having been working in this project for four years at least. Yeah. So so uh, Liberouder is it's a router, how the name say, and it's a router that has been designed with the community network needs in mind. It's it's a, it has been designed mainly by people that it's involved directly involved in community networks for community networks. And um, and of course, what is a community network? It's in in our experience, uh, our, our community network is is a network that is managed more or less directly by the community participant, by the user of the network. It's uh, it's doing more. It's done more or less, more or less more, more than than less in the in the open. So it's thinking with the um, with. With in mind that it could be extended by an, anyone that wants to participate, just could could study a bit how it works and uh, and join the, the network. And uh, um, the main the main um, the main drive uh, be behind the community network that we have experienced is the is to satisfy the basic needs of communication of of people and and not uh, making profit out, out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, in our case, the community network have, have been used mainly to share local content, and uh, well, not just local, but first locally and and also mm -hmm. with the with the world. Um, so the the community, the good effects of uh, of community network is that it's uh, not only social but also technological empowerment because this. It's like an osmosis, no? When you when uh, the you are exposed to a technology that you uh, can put your hands on, mm -hmm. even if you come from a background that you have not much to do with the technology, you start uh, crimping an Ethernet cable, looking at ah, this is metal plate and so on, and bit by bit, you you end up learning how, at least on a more abstract level, how those those magic box works how a network works and how how does why when you unplug the electricity it go down and so on and um, this this um, uh, this complex relation mm -hmm. between people and technology and uh, um, a push for a community uh, dr driven development yes also this is like a starting point for a neighborhood to start doing other things like just uh, to to manage another uh, issues of the community, so this is one thing that it's important for them to have this network and to communicate. But also they are creating the the bonds on, of the community doing this. So what? Those are images that we collaged together to give an idea of. What a community network may be. So people, devices. Yes, that uh, image is from San Jose La Quintana. That's a village in Argentina. And that's the graph of the network in like two years ago, maybe. Yeah, or now it's, it's bigger. Yes, bigger. So to, um, to empower and foster the, the, the community network developments, it's not that you can you can use any kind of technology, but there is technologies that are more friendly to community network development, and technology that here that is more an obstacle to to the flourishing of of community network development. So, what what kind of technologies we have identified that uh, foster this this community development? And they have common common characteristic. They are accessible, easy to use, and uh, and cheap because if, if something is it's costly by it itself, it is a barrier for, for, for the people who have not many, much, much money. If something is difficult to use, there is an entrance barrier for the people who have not much time to uh, study 10 years or five or one to understand how to power, a, to, uh, how to deploy a network. And um, yes, it has to be easy to learn. And 
they should be able to go as deep up as possible and to learn everything so the design has to be in the open and free. Uh, obviously, and if it's a community driving project also, it has some relation to what they are doing also. Uh, and mainly, uh, the topology of this network has to be distributed, distributed, sorry. Uh, and the best thing we, we do is uh, the, mesh te the mesh topology. That's, that's particularly important because the mesh topology make easier for normal people to contribute to the network, to extend the network. So they don't, don't have need to mount a super node like with the costly hardware and many antennas pointing to, to the north, to the sud and so on. Um, that, that's, that mesh topology make it easier for the people with cheap devices and with not much, not much understanding, they are able to not only to use the network but to participate and, and extend the, the uh, network. Yes, and also it's like the way they participate in their community, it's like a mesh. So when the, the network relates to how they relate with each other, it's better than, than some, the, the people, it's a network and it, it's a mesh network, but the network is not a mesh network, so it's easier to... Uh, yeah, to, un to understand it's more intuitive, no? It's like mm -hmm. the, 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 the network tissue resembles the social tissue, so it's... If, if someone go away from the mesh network, from, uh, from the social network, it's also, also you see the, the direct implication on the tau. Okay, the link now is... The, is the connection now is working worse because we lost someone. Um, so technology, there is, for many years we have been hack, hacking routers and stuff like that that we found on the market. It has been good, it has helped us a lot, but the technology available on, on the market has never been meant to, to, um, to be developed towards those objectives, to, towards the mesh networks, towards the community network and so on. It has been mainly devices that have been sold in the, in the market as a home ADSL router. Mm -hmm. So all, just all already the, the fact that you had to flash the router, understand how to uh, rename the image file so your router would accept it and so on, was, it's, it's a barrier and it's not very um, easy to grasp for non-technical non people. And then FCC, because their things were so easy, they come to, with their lockdown so to make the thing worse. Yes, the, the, the lockdown for uh, it's so, some policy they have had for the manufacturers so the, you can't change the firmware or you can't change it in an easy way. So they outdid that in, in a, a, a new de uh, device, can't be changed, can be done, but not in an easy way. So. Uh, this was like a starting point for the project because you, we can have uh, community networks that are sustainable based on whatever the markets want. So uh, we came up, we started this common effort that has been battle mesh has helped a lot because we met a lot of people in the battle mesh that helped in this in this effort. And we came up with, uh, with the, the first things that we defined were the specification of uh, Libre Router. So we, we decided the first thing that we the realized were that to, to work well in a mesh network, one radio is bad, two radio is so-so, but more than three radio is, is much better. So we, so we decided, okay, the router we will go to design, we will have at least three radios. Uh, from that requirement, um, descended that we, and also from the requirement that we needed good support on with the free software driver, mm -hmm. it descended that we use this chip from Ateros that has to, uh, to already on the pinout of the CPU, mm -hmm. it has to, um, to P PCI Express connectors, so we could uh, put two extra radios without, without extra components, without a PCI Express chip. We opted to put uh, an abundant flash, so we can have, at the same time on the flash, you can have two firmware. So for example, when, when you want to flash, you can flash on one partition, and if, for example, the user after half an hour 
doesn't confirm that everything has gone good, it automatically rolls back to, to booting from the, from the old partition. It has a good amount of RAM, gigabit Ethernet port, and this is this, um, this uh, quite um, wide range of voltage accepted by the power units. It's especially um, useful when, for example, you have uh, solar power. You could plug it directly on the battery output without extra circuitry to stabilize the voltage to and to a specific voltage. It's all done already inside the liberator. router. So you could, you could feed it with uh, any, any tension between 12 and 32 volts. Mm -hmm. It also has the power up path through, so you can use a device to power another device. Yes. What's the power consumption? How much do you need? It depends on the, on the use case, but it's like 9 watts. Between 4 and a 5, 4.5 either, and 9 watts. Uh, in, 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 in good use. And then also hardware, hardware watchdog, so if, if the device freeze, it gets automatically rebooted. And a lot of connections, so hackers can, can have fun and extend the, the device or they like. So from, uh, from this, this specification, we worked a lot of months and, and we came out with this first prototype. So it, has, it is one board with the CPU, and it actually, except from some little things that we fixed manually after it mm -hmm. shipped. We achieved to, to design a new Ethernet uh, <laughs> connection <laughs> standard <laughs> that was only for this device. <laughs> so we had to root manually the... Yeah, that was for, for be compliant with FCC lockdown. Yeah. So because if you, could, if you couldn't connect to Ethernet, you couldn't flash it. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, there was an error. So the pinout of those two Ethernet ports and the first prototype was inverted. So you had to crimp your cable on the opposite and, and it worked. <laughs> but that's okay. That's, that's a pretty satisfactory um, um, result for a first prototype. Usually hardware prototype, you have mm, a, a bunch of generation because it actually run. While this, except for little, little problems, it got in, entered the pro it was used in, uh, in nodes in uh, Jose de la Quintana um, and worked. It was installed in main nodes and it worked uh, fine. So we had, we had it installed in uh, Jose de la Quintana. We got uh, a bunch of feedbacks from the community. And inspired by that feedback, we, we decided some, some changes to improve the board. We, we decided to make a modular board as you saw the, the um, the first prototype was a big, uh, big green board, and uh, we decided to uh, yes, put put the the more difficult circuit things in in, a, in the core board, so we can have an, an extension board that can be developed easily and with more frequency uh, or, or be adapted to other conditions, and or everyone can have another design uh, for for the other board. Uh, yeah. Also, also, what one feed, one important feedback we got is like that uh, um, people are uh, crimping is not a, is not easy, uh, but crimping with the grounding cable is even especially if you don't have access to connector with the with the grounding cable extension, it's uh, it's quite problematic and because m many times you think you have uh, crimped it because the cable work but the grounding didn't, uh, doesn't do proper contact. So for example, with electrical storms and stuff like that, you can, you can have your magnetics burn easily. So we added an extra dedicated um, grounding connector. So you can just, with a screw, uh, connect a, a proper grounding cable in addition to the one in the, in the Ethernet uh, either. And this is the, 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 the second prototype, the Vision 0.2. As you can see, the, our son was explaining the, the, the blue core and the extension board. And, and from that, we again tested and so on, and we came up with, uh, with, uh, with various improvements. And, 
and yes, in, in uh, between to, uh, 2016 and 2019, we we came from the from the first prototype. Finish your okay, to to the to the 1.2 version that is the one you see here. So you said earlier that there are three radios. Yes. And I see four antenna connectors, and four is not a multiple of three. Yes. Um, <laughs> Just repeat the question. Okay, so Julius asked, uh, you said uh, uh, there is three radios, but I see four antennas connectors, mm -hmm. and four is not a multiplier of three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have a 2.4 radio that is embedded into the CPU and does internal 2.4 um, antenna. And then the, the extension, the, the two uh, 5 gigahertz radio that are connected through PCI Express have the four external connector. So all the, all the antenna are, uh, all the radio are 2x2 two two MIMO. So actually two connectors are, no, are not there because the antenna is integrated in the main, in the, in the router. And after we reached this, this satisfactory result, we ordered the first batch, and it finally ar arrived. <laughs> so we ordered the first 50, yes. 50 routers, mm -hmm. and uh, we started, well, Sun personally uh, received them, tested them, and, and so they were all, all working. Mm -hmm. And well. This is the hardware. If you want, you can expect that later. Or but but Liberator is, is, is not just hardware. So as hardware was a ma uh, has become a major barrier with, to, for community networks with FCC lockdown and the history, historical uh, behavior of, of, many, of many producers, mm -hmm. uh, also, we also developed um, uh, software that make this thing easier to use. So when when you get a Libre router, it already comes with LibreMesh and uh, LibreMesh with the uh, Lime app. So you, from your mobile phone, you can, when you plug it, uh, it open a, a hotspot and it scan for, um, for available other LibreMesh networks. And this suggests you, yeah, do you want to connect to this other LibreMesh network or you want to create a new one? Mm -hmm. So if you decide to create a new one, you just uh, provide a name for the network, or either you go to advanced setting and set more things, and, and, that's, and that's it, the, and the network is created. And um, Yes, also you have the antenna alignment thing in the, uh, ah, sorry. In, the, in the app, so, so when you, you're using the app, you can point the antennas also out of the box, so you, you don't have to enter in the console or, or that. And, and, you, and you, you have the names of all, all the other nodes in the network, so you can align them. And, and then also, uh, the line map of these uh, little goodies that show you how is your network set up. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if the network is down, the map is cached. So you, that you, of course, you want to see the map uh, with more reason when, <laughs> when the things get broken. So it's easier to debug also for, for normal people. They, they can look at the map and say, ah, this, this link that usually is, uh, is connecting me to this branch of the network or to internet, for example, it's down. So probably the, the problem might be here or here, not, not here, for example. And this, this is very useful because we are used to interact with the uh, communities that, uh, that access their internet with, uh, with this technology. Mm -hmm. and most of the time, people just write on some group or by email or whatever, uh, internet doesn't work. So it's like providing this kind of tools help people to get involved more and start looking, OK, it's not just that internet doesn't work. They say, ah, the, the connection between my home, my house, and uh, uh, I don't know, and, and John is, is broken. No? Yeah. So, so and it facilitates the participation, the learning of, mm -hmm. uh, of the people. Yes, also the, the, the line map in the cell phone has like a trace route thing. Like you see from where you are with the phone to the gateway, with, with links are okay. 
you, yeah, so it's easier to move and check in, in another place. Uh, from this, it's okay, but from here, it's not. So if you don't have the map, well, the map is new. So sí, sí, the map is new. <laughs> Yeah. So, so it's then it's not hard. It's only hardware and software. It also comes with documentation, videos, and so on. And all of these have been possible thanks to many people. We didn't, um, we couldn't collect all the, the photos of all the people that participate, but some of them are. At least you probably know many of the of those faces. This, they have been hanging around Battle Mesh for many years. And thanks, even if you have questions, we are available to... We wanted to pass the device, so... Ah, shit, I wrote, I wrote that, thanks, okay. <laughs> and this is allow how it looks like when it's mounted. Ah, it's, there is a, a cap here, yes. where you can connect the cable and the antennas. It has USB ports. And those are the external antennas, so you can point them independently. And, and it's, those are sec all the antennas are, are sectorial, so they they are not omnidirectional, but they are still easy to point because they are like like this opening. So it's it's quite intuitive for the people, like you say, ah, just point it. Look, look just put the antenna looking toward your neighbor. No? Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Sen. Any question? Um, how expensive is it? Be between 100 and 100 and a half uh, dollars. No, and, and, and 150. Yeah. And a half hundred. <laughs> Sorry. Including an antenna. No, Dave, wait. <laughs> Since I'm trying to recruit people to climb some trees at my mesh network, um, how can I get about eight of these guys? So you won't probably find it on Amazon. I, we don't know if some, some community networks say, yeah, send the router to us and then sell it to Amazon. Seems it doesn't happen yet. Uh, we are um, un, uh, the, uh, managing the importing stuff for Argentina and other Latin American country. So usually what we suggest is look your country and in your country how we could manage that thing and uh, and and uh, contact with us and Edwin that is the Chinese producer from Dragino and we can see how how to do that. Yes one one of the ideas is to use Dragino's uh, AliExpress and, and and the other online stores to to sell directly to to all the world except where we know how to ship and... Uh, is it a, kick, a Kickstarter or anything like that to get an order for a thousand plus units out? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. We want to do that. Uh, it's just in our to-do list. Yeah, this, these are part of the first batch that was 50 piece. And now we already um, talked with Dragino to produce the, the next batch, it will be 500. But yes, we, we plan to do something like that for a bigger production and lowering the cost mm -hmm. a bit. That should be ready like in a, in a week or two weeks. Uh, the, the, five, the 500, no? Yes. Yeah, Dragino, they have an AliExpress. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, based on the conversations we had, we have to self-organize how we uh, bring the devices in Europe and in the United States because your team, Alter Mundi and Libra Router, don't have resources to manage on that. Yes. So we should take profit of this meeting here to see how uh, we manage the Europe stuff like licensing, uh, getting the product here, and so on. Also for Europe and United States, because them, they, they, they are prior prioritizing South America, and, and that's great. But you know, I mean, we have to do things. Thank you very much, Pedro. <laughs> I was just going to say, Dragino has an AliExpress store, so if mm -hmm. they'll ship for you, that's probably the easiest. Yes, yes, we know. Yeah. That's why we paid the first lot. That is not very huge, but it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of money. So we will try to test it. 
you didn't mention the funding, uh, it seems to me. No? Was funded by uh, yeah, ABC? We, we, yeah, we, we, it's not just ABC, but we participated to multiple grants, mm -hmm. one from APC, one from Frida, and some, someone else from, uh, from ISOC, maybe? Yes, from yeah. ISOC also. Yeah, so I, I lost the account, <laughs> but... We lost that slide somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We um, so do you, do you know of a uh, Bulgarian company called Olimex? Yes, the name is not new so to me. So Olimex are yes, doing basically Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. but with uh, Chinese chips produced in Europe, entirely free hardware, uh -huh. And the only documentation you can find are the schematics. So I'm a little bit angry at them because they forced me to look at the schematics because the only way to find out. And uh, the point is that they have the infrastructure, they are in Europe, and lately the Raspberry Pi Foundation has produced a model that is okay, which is very bad. Because it means that all the free hardware companies, until now, we could say that the free hardware is more expensive, but it's better. Right now, since the Raspberry Pi Foundation have finally produced a decent model, okay, that's worrying for free hardware. Okay, and I'm wondering, I have been trying to encourage them through different channels to look into routers. Okay, because nobody is producing routers. So those guys, they're on the Black Sea nice warm place with a beach. <laughs> they are friendly to free software, they are friendly to free hardware, and they are within the European Union, so they are producing things that are not subject to the extremely brutal European Union uh, import taxes. Okay, and I'm wondering whether you should not... Oh, th that's uh, a great, chat a great information. And so this is free hardware too, so they could eventually just take the schematics and and produce it. Also, also the design has been made with the, uh, make it easier to be produced in uh, in other places. So also, for example, if the core it's too expensive to be produced in in Europe because of the components, they could, for example, buy the core and, and, uh, and produce the mega board or whatever combination. So what are the next steps? Do you have any further steps? Like yeah. uh, I remember I was, the, you were trying to play with the TB white spaces, or uh, yeah. maybe a yeah. blockchain chipset. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no we, we, ha we have no plans for blockchain chipset. We, va we published also the current work on TB white space uh, um, fr frequency converter. So you could eventually uh, just uh, you have the you connect the the output from the 2.4 gigahertz radio to this converter that has the sch schematics is published the, on on our repository, and use that radio on TV white space. Also, well, it, that could be done also putting other um, other radios on the on the, the PCI PC slot. Mm -hmm. slot. And uh, one thing that still is not ready, we wanted to put. Um, in, in, the, in fact, in the, in the specific original specification, there was GPS uh, receiver. Uh, we had problem probably with noise, so, so we, we actually, if, if you look uh, with attention with the board, you can see there is four connectors that is to connect a, a GPS sensor. But in this version, we, we didn't put it because it wasn't working. So one thing is to fix this uh, last bit. Another thing that we we are talking about is um, the the switch uh, support up to four gigabit Ethernet port. So we we are we are thinking about using the two spare Ethernet port to to um, expose them as, as pin out so for it be easy to connect uh, fiber media converters. And so this is still keep go, uh, going on mm -hmm. and. So we have this version in production, but we are still thinking and designing new new things. Also, with the software, we are advancing, etc. Mm -hmm. We are also working the standardization in Argentina, Brazil, and our South American countries. Uh, actively doing it by, by ourselves. So it sounds like you've made it very hacker friendly, which is excellent. Have you guys? made it also easy to 
uh, say, flash the firmware, like hold this button and then get another, a third firmware, which lets you flash the first firmware so that, you know, when you're bricking it, you can really brick it nicely and then recover very nicely. Like uh, some other ones do this, like GLINet and so uh, on. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can, if, if you, if you flash using, we, we have developed, well, Sun developed an utility that's called Save, Safe, uh, uh, Safe Upgrade. So if you use this utility that comes with LibreRouter inside to flash the image, even the, if the image is skewed bad, it will boot with the other partition. And if you, again, flash with Safe Reboot, it will write on the partition that is skewed, not in, on the one you are using. Yes, the, currently the, the bootloader doesn't do a, a very easy way to previously from, done from the Linux to, to do that, what you're, we're saying. It's in our to-do list. Someone uh, said that he, he will con contribute that feature, but it's not ready yet. If you want to do that, I can, I can help you to help us. Uh, what's the Wi-Fi driver for the uh, Wi-Fi that is inside the system on the chip? It is uh, ATH9K or yes, 10K? The, the three 9K? radios are ATH9K. Wow. <coughs> okay. the, the idea on using a, an old chip was to be to use the, the, the open software and not to use the block firmware. And do you have a POE recovery mode? I mean, so Im imagine that you flash it incorrectly uh, or the flash is corrupted and, and you have to flash it again. Uh, Ubiquity has, uh, from the POE, you can remotely flash with a TFTP mm -hmm. server or some, you know? So you need like a reset thing in the POE to flash remotely. Do you have it? Do you plan to have it? You so uh, so uh, I, I don't know if everyone is familiar with newer Ubiquiti hardware. They, in the power over Ethernet, they have a button that you, if you press it, the, uh, it sends like a, the electricity on the cable in a different way, and, uh, and the device puts itself in, uh, in, uh, in recovery mode. That's basically, it's a boot a minimal firmware with a TFTP server that listens so you can push an image. So in our case, that is not strictly necessary because we have a sa safe uh, upgrade. So basically, if you s screw up with a flash, it will boot with the other partition. And if you, again, you screw up, it's the same. So it's, it's not, there is not this problem. The other problem that has the, that system is that, for example, if you live in places where the electricity is not that stable, uh, it happens a lot that uh, there is maybe a, a change in the voltage or, or there is a electromagnetic storm and uh, and all your device goes in the maintenance mode uh, how do you handle configuration in this dual flash mode so is there one configuration file which is used by both so what happens when I put there garbage I'm sorry I didn't I, I missed the question um, what happens when I configure something wrong or the configuration is broken? Is it also two configurations and for each image or how is it handled? Yes, I each image is uh, its own image by itself. We have two software to, to manage that. If you want to change the local configuration of the local partition, you can use Safe Reboot. That's a tool that you turn it on and then you change whatever you want. And if it, if it doesn't work, the next time it boots, it will be like it was before. But if you want to test another image, a complete image, you use the safe upgrade to, to, to use the other partition. The, it uses the bootloader to, and, and a part of the flash to store the state. So the, the next time it boots, it will, it will boot in the, in the first. In, in, in the previous partition. Also, the watchdog will prevent that that if, if it boots but it gets stalled in the kernel or whatever, it will go back to the, to the last one. Okay. It's kind of answer. Uh, so if I understand well, your watchdog is a microcontroller, so it's very flexible. So you could like, for instance, boot and if it gets 
no input, you reboot after one hour or something like that, so you could try configuration and whatnot very easily, right? Mm -hmm. Any other question? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, today you were mentioning about going through certification. Is it going to go through EU certification or something? Yeah, because um, apparently it, it could seem that we have no interest in EU certification, but many countries of the third world just copy-paste EU normative about electronic devices. So if your device is uh, certified by, for EU market, they just accept it. So we are actively uh, putting through, uh, pushing for EU certification of the Libre Router. And we are doing this like in, in these months. So, uh, but, but how it relates to the lockdown? Yes, we, we, are, we are thinking in different ways. One way is to, well, I don't want to do that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> because if I tell, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we can talk about that. Yeah, 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 yeah we can talk about it. You should say that no. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess. But we have uh, an idea on how we could do that. So now we have two things to two things to talk about after we finish here. Is how to have a liberal arts in Europe, and an explanation of the record. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.